Hey everybody, and welcome to the next Geek Freaks movie review. Today we are talking John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. We are talking full spoilers, as I am going to go through the story and all the major plot beats. So, if you still want to see John Wick 3, we'll go ahead and get that out of the way, and you don't want the war uh, spoilers, this is a good movie. If you like the John Wick movies, you'll enjoy this one. Uh, overall, I'd give it like a, a solid B, maybe B minus, eh, probably just a solid B. It's a good movie. I, I really enjoyed it. There are moments where it doesn't feel like a John Wick movie, and that's my biggest complaint. I like his, like, I'll say the term double tap often in here, if you don't know what that is. It's where you shoot once, and then you, like, in the chest, and you shoot again in the head, you know, just to confirm the kill. It's one of those things that when you see in John Wick, you're like, badass, that seems so real, and blah, 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 blah. you know, it, it's something who, a person who doesn't go around shooting people thinks looks like it should be real, you know, so it's one of those things. Anyways, the movie is really good. It's a good action movie. It, it, it just really harkens back to other action movies, score and directing and all that stuff like that. All seems pretty average. So that's the spoiler-free stuff, guys. Go watch it if you're a John Wick fan. If not, then you can just wait till, till Blu-rays or until uh, the streaming services, but it, it's, it's solid. All right, guys. We're going into spoilers. You got your warning out of the way. And boom, we start off. Number two ended. He's uh, excommunicado, which means that you're no longer uh, safe to use the hotel that's in New York, the, the uh, Continental, which I love all the names in this movie. We have like, you know, things like, uh, what a, excommunicado is a great example of it. It's like old Latin fancy terms. And even like the sets and stuff like that, they're all dressed up like these ancient Gothic sets that like is a ballet studio or every little bit it, it feels like you're in a world that's a lot older than new york or the surrounding world around it it's 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 a flash from the past that's still existing today reminds me a lot of like assassin's creed which you know double assassins and stuff like that i guess you could think of like the the legion from uh, batman anyways so it's, it's one of those things where where the, the, the traditions have been around for a long time, and they do it a lot in the set. They show you that. Anyway, so, um, yeah, he's excommunicado. Uh, he, he's he's banished because he had killed somebody in the hotel, which was a safe ground. So to do that means, boom, you're out, man. And uh, Ian McShane, who uh, who runs the hotel, he's, he's called the manager of, of uh, the Continental, tells him, like, hey, man, I got I to gotta send our troops after you. I got to send the, the higher order after you. We learn the name of, of where, of who the uh, uh, Continental answers to, and it's called the High Table. Yeah, the High Table. They're like this big league of assassins um, that, that you can tell is going to be an overarching villain. You can tell there's going to be a John Wick 4, and so it's this big overarching thing. So uh, Ian McShane, I'm going to call him Ian McShane. I don't remember his name in the movie, and I don't care because he's always Ian McShane. Everything he does is awesome. Uh, I'm going to be watching Deadwood in a bit, but I really love him from Kings and everything else, so he's, he's really good. Uh, so John Wick, of course, played by Keanu Reeves. I'll be referring to him as John a lot of times. He's on the run, and uh, there's this dog that's, you know, famously the reason everything started was this other dog, but there is a dog he got from number two that he still loves. He has one hour to get all his affairs in order. He could use the services of the um, high table. They have these coins they trade in, um, and so he's using the, he's using that last hour to kind of finish things up, so he tells the cabbie that works for them, like, take my dog to the hotel so it's safe, so that's, boom, that's on the list. He, uh, what's some of the other things he does? He goes to the library to get up some of his backup tools, which is mostly like different pendants. There's one thing I really like about this film and this world is things like old gold coins are re resemblance of, they did talk about it later on, of, of a relationship of uh, 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 due services and stuff like that. Not necessarily like of a currency. It's not worth a set amount of money. It's not. If you wanted something from the guild, this is like, I you owe me, I owe you type of thing like that. So it's kind of cool old world stuff. He also picks up a rosary, which he uses to kind of like get his passage into what would be considered like the Russian mob, basically. He also gets these things, they call them uh, markers, where it's a blood oath. You put your blood on the marker saying, I owe you a, my, a, my blood debt. And then once it's answered, you poke yourself with a prick that's on the marker and then you put it next to it. And then, like, okay, there you go. It's paid off. It's just so cool how this world is built up. It's one of my favorite parts. This needs to be a video game. I would love to play a video game where you're in this world. It's really great. Anyway, so. He's running around and pretty quick on, you know, even before actually the time comes up, which should be something that's in the movie they should talk about. It. But anyways, even before his time's up, this one hour, assassination attempts are kicking in. And the assassin, the, the assassins will get 14 million at the beginning of the movie, becomes 15 uh, soon after for killing John Wick. So, you know, the chase is on. Everybody's after him. I mean, I would be too. 14 million, get, make me an assassin. I got this, guys. And they're going after Keanu Reeves there. So, you know, good luck. 
Um, even Ian McShane says, like, yeah, it's 14 million in all, in all of the best assassins. It's going to be about an even fight for him. Uh, so, yeah, we're getting all these assassins coming in. We notice that Lawrence Fishburne, a.k.a. Morpheus, they will call him Morpheus this whole time because it is Morpheus and Neil. Anyways, Morpheus' group, they decided to go ahead and respect the, uh, the, uh, the agreements of the uh, excommunicado. One thing that's not sure is whether or not they're actually part of the high table's group or it's just a relationship between them and the high table because he is punished later on for giving John Wick his gun. So you almost think he is actually part of the high table. But anyways, Lawrence Fishburne is is deciding to go ahead and honor the 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 uh, uh, excommunicado, which kind of keeps everything safe for them. The uh, one thing I like is we see like at the last few moments of his hour that John Wick has, he goes to a doctor to kind of patch up a, a cut he got from an earlier assassination attempt. The doctor is the key maker from Matrix, which I thought was cool. It's like, oh, okay, this is like a little one-off character. Doctor's not going to be in this movie long, but it's kind of cool. The uh, the doctor's in the middle of suturing him up when the time comes up, so he has to stop. So John Wick has to finish it himself. And then it's so cool because when he's doing it, I was like, oh, that's a problem. He John Wick's looking through the medicine cabinet to try to find something to kind of like help him with this. And the doctor's like, it's the one on the left or whatever. And so he technically does help him after that. And he's and John Wick's about to leave. He's like, I need you to, they're not going to believe me that I didn't help you. He's like, yeah, but you stopped in the hour. But he's like, yeah, but th they'll know I helped you with the medicine. So he's like, shoot me here and shoot me there. So it looks like a struggle. And that's what they do. It's, you know, it, it was a very cool scene. It kind of shows you the level of debt they have in this world. Um, okay, so we're seeing these different fights happen. Every, every, all these different assassinations. The first act of this movie, first 30 minutes of this movie is all like assassination survivals. So it's it's classic, you know, John Wick stuff, you know. Uh, one thing I love about the way John Wick fights is it's so brutal. It's so, you know, just fierce and just rage filled. Like when he's throwing knives, like the, him and these two assassins are throwing knives back and forth. And it's not like like what you'd expect, like boom, right in the head. No, it's just like, I got a bunch of knives. I'm throwing them at you. Some sticks, some don't. And it's just a mess. But it's because it's like out of desperation just to get as much hits as you can, you know. Um, when he does kill people like, like oh, he's famously for the double tap but other moments where it's just like it's it's just brute force and and like yeah you use the tools around you but they're real brute forces they're brutal kills there's one where he like the guy's like dying and you think like okay john will leave him alive no he picks up this axe and he throws it across the room just to finish the guy off in the head and it's like all right i gotta keep going really <laughs> really exciting like moments exciting kills and it's, it's all very brutal you know i don't, don't know what that says about me but yeah it's pretty nuts so yeah uh, directing wise, this first scene, every time he's transitioning to a new building, it's like heavy rain, really kind of bringing out, it, it, it emphasizes the idea that like John Wick's out on his own, he's down on his luck, he's just trying to survive the weather kind of thing. So it, it's it's a common use, you see it a lot in movies, but it is kind of cool to see, it was it was nicely done. Um, okay, so yeah, so he's mostly surviving Survi uh, assassinations attempt, um, he's he's getting his his old gun and stuff like that. One thing, uh, this is the moment where we're seeing him go to the library and grab like his medallions and his rosary and stuff like that. One thing to remember is this is our version of a Chekhov's gun in a movie full of guns, which is funny. This is the Chekhov's gun, which is a movie trope. Uh, I think it's actually a story writing trope, but it is, it's a movie idea. Is Once you see a gun in the movie, that means that gun will have to fire to change the plot later on. Like it, it's It's too obvious. So... A, a, you know, say say you're watching, uh, this is a terrible example, but Wizard of Oz, okay? Or no, let's go Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, they tell you like, hey, that ring's gonna be, it makes you go invisible. By the end of the movie, Frodo has to use that ring to go invisible to do something, and it will be dangerous, and he does it several times. It, it just has to happen. So when we see him receive all these coins, the rosary and the marker, we know that each one of those things are gonna become valuable, and he's already using the coins right away. The marker he uses at the end, or you know, half, like act three, and then, you know, so we're, we're seeing these things at the end of Act 2. So we're seeing, like, all these little checkoff guns, and it's fun to kind of catch them as they go. He uses the rosary to get into the uh, Russian mobs. Uh, play, the, the mob boss is played by um, Ange Angelica Houston, which, guys, boy, if you guys know who she is, she's she's Morticia from the old Adams Family movies. When I was a kid, I had a crush on her. Woo-hoo! Boy, I love those movies. So <laughs> she's still holding up well and plays an excellent mob boss. So she really kind of has this, like, aura of not needing to strain herself because she's got this in check and yet she's she's like also a ballerina uh, what would you call that coordinator maybe i don't know i don't know the ballerina world my niece does she's into it but i don't know and 
she's kind of like running the place while surrounded by bodyguards. She's, she's got it all in check. And it's like John Wick was part of their world at first. So he uses the, the rosary to get in there, asks a favor to be able to get into uh, Casablanca, uh, where he's going to meet with a, a friend of his who owns another debt. And he's trying to make his, his way up to the high table so that he could try to complete his case. And so he's moving along and they go ahead and they all right, we'll honor you that. So they end up taking a brand and branding over a tattoo he has in the back, which I think is the tattoo of like, you know, belonging to the, the Russian mob. I assume it's the Russian mob. Don't give me, don't quote me on that, but he's moving along and, and, and it's a really cool moment where she's like, you're gone, you know, it's terrible. And you almost feel like there was a, like she raised him to be a, a badass like this. So there's a real mom and son kind of moment where I understand what you have to do, but I will miss you. It's kind of a sad thing. We're also having this B-plot going on where the high table is mad that Ian McShane even let this murder happen in his hotel. Uh, so they they send off, uh, let me see, I got the name here, Agent Kate Dillon, and they, they talk to him and say like, hey man, you got to get replaced. So now Ian McShane's on the out and he has to be replaced as manager. He's not happy with this, of course, and, uh, and he's got seven days to do it. And then we learn also, they go to Lawrence Fishburne, Morpheus, and say, you're out too, seven days, you're out of here. And they're going to give him the seven cuts to death. It's, you know, that's how it is. You got to do your thing. Uh, the reason Fishburne's in trouble is because he gave John Wick the gun that he was used to do that murder in the hotel. Uh, we eventually see, we get back with John Wick. He gets into Casablanca. We see that Halle Berry is the manager of the hotel for Casablanca, just like uh, Ian McShane with the other one. And she's got these two dogs that are with her. And they're really cool dogs. They're actually like, uh, what are they called? German Shepherds. And they're, they're really well trained. And a little behind the scene thing is, I think it was six or four months. I think it was six months. Halle Berry actually trained with those dogs to give them commands. And it was really cool to see. Like, you could tell she works really well with them as they're walking through the halls with a gun and there's firing going off. There are moments where the dogs are in the room with them. So the dogs are just super well trained to be studio dogs. And it, it's cool to see that kind of well-trained dogs doing their thing. And Halle Berry, of course, putting the effort with them. Uh, I think it was Keanu Reeves who was even saying, like, when when he was around them, they'd be kind of friendly. But with her, it was like their mama. So they were really well trained for her. And it was cool to see that the, an actor put that much effort into it. It was really nice, neat. Um, as we're going along, uh, we get we get back to Asia, Kate, Dylan, and uh, they end up recruiting Zero. Zero is this guy who he's, he's so freaking badass when you first meet him. He's like this like uh, a kind of a walk up sushi chef, you know, like a, a little sushi pop up restaurant, and he's got his cooks and stuff like that. And she's talking to him. They're talking to him and uh, and they say, uh, you know, like, hey, we need you, blah, blah, blah. And apparently Zero, who is the name of the chef, is like one of the most elite assassins ever. And all of his chefs are, they're basically straight up ninjas. Like they're freaking ninjas, guys. And so they, they right away after that, they head over to the Russian uh, Russian mob and they start clearing out the Russian mob. And it's, they're just like having no problems with it. I'm kind of skipping a little bit in the storyline here, so just bear with me. They're moving along and they get to um, the leader of the Russian mob and in punishment, what they do, guys, it's so gruesome. God, it's so terrible. You know, like they're like, you help John Wick. You need to pay atonement for this. Failty, they call it failty, old school stuff. And so she puts her hands out, guys. I'm going to act this out like it matters to you. <laughs> uh, she puts her hands out like like praying stance and they run a thick blade through both hands. I thought they're going to cut them off, which would have been terrible, but they run the thick blade through both hands and they pull it out. And that was her penance. And it's like, oh my God, that pain. It made me cringe. I was like, oh, that's got to be so terrible. But that's her penance for helping John Wick. And now, I mean, at least she has her hands. I guess that's a plus. As long as they didn't cut anything major, you know. It was nuts. All right, moving along with John Wick. He has Halle Berry's help because he has the marker. That was the, the Chekhov's gun moment. Uh, it, he had helped her save her daughter, which would be something I think we see in a future movie, the, the ramifications of that. But anyways, so he has a debt from her. So she helps him to get a meeting with uh, the guy who you can tell is like running the mint or basically he's part of the high table, but I think he's running their mint, those coins that they pass around and the markers they pass around. That's basically what it is. And guys, I know you're tired of hearing Game of Thrones from us because that's we're just such Game of Thrones fanboys. But this dude is played by Braun from Game of Thrones. So he's called Braun from here on out. I'm just sorry. That's just going to have to happen. He has a, like a a Spanish accent, maybe a French accent. It's, it's pretty he thick and heavy. He does pretty good with it. I think it might not be his best forte to switch accents on us. He's normally Australian. He's actually, guys, maybe he's New Zealand. But anyways, back in the day, he was a pop star in Australia. The guy who plays Braun in Game of Thrones. Look it up. It's crazy. He's also in Black Mirror. 
a very depressing episode of Black Mirror. Don't don't watch that one. <laughs> it's, the twist at the end is like heartbreaking and like, wait, why did I cheer for? Th-? Anyways, I, I don't want to get into that. So, uh, yeah. So they get to John Wick, or they get to uh to Bronze Castle, and they're they're pleading with him like, hey, we want to try to to talk to the top top high table guys. And he's like, that's fine. We can make this happen. Uh, you know, there's a little this, a little that, and he says he wants the dog in payment, one of the dogs of Halle Berry, and she's like, no. So then he says, okay, well, we have an agreement that everything's about social justice. So he shoots one of the dogs, which I was like, oh no, you know, because I know how much work they put in these dogs. I was like, what are you doing? All the dogs are wearing bulletproof vests, which is pretty cool and kind of hackney. But anyways, so Halle Berry, and even John Wick's like, please don't do it, please don't do it. Halle Berry starts going crazy. And I'm not necessarily a huge fan of Halle Berry because I think she might be overpaid. And I'm not happy how she treated with the whole Storm casting in X-Men. She thought she should be paid more. And it's like, she's just Storm. It's not a big deal. Anyway, so she goes crazy. She was awesome in this movie. And starts popping people off. John Wick starts helping. And, of course, everybody's dying around him. Classic action movie moment. It actually is kind of a long thing. And I, I got to say, it's kind of it was kind of a weird moment as they're escaping from, you know, Bronze Palace, which might be High Garden. That's a Game of Thrones reference for you guys. Anyway, so they're escaping from Bronze Palace. And it's kind of too much. It was kind of like these guys were running up with swords and knives. And some were using guns, but it was kind of like, it was like an old, uh, it was like an old movie where, like an old action, like a Steven Seagal movie, where it's just like one at a time, let's come up and fight. And we're beyond this, especially John Wick is beyond this. We don't see him double tap much. He's almost frantic. It's like John Wick is cooler when he's not being chased, but when he's a chaser, but he's been chased before in the past and he's still awesome. He's just less cool and collected. So it's kind of like, man, this isn't the John Wick I like. But anyway, so they end up escaping through there and they follow bronze, um, uh, and that is, it's actually funny because all general that action, you almost kind of get bored with it because it's too much action. They're not counting bullets or not. It's just not as realistic. It's like it was directed by a different group of people that direct other stuff. And this director is actually the same director from the original John Wick. So it surprised me. Anyway, so they're going out to the desert because Braun had told him, like, that's where you're going to find the highest council. You go until you pass out, basically, and you're good. Uh, John Wick leaves Halle Berry there. Uh, before, he, you know, he, he leaves her to be okay. He signs off the debt. Halle Berry's debt's paid off, which we'll see here in John Wick 4. There's no doubt. There is something there. The daughter will come into play. So John Wick's out into the into the desert. He walks until he basically passes out. We skip forward, and then John is eventually passed out. And uh, these guys pick him up. They have, like, these camels and stuff like that. They take him back to this, like, tent. This awesome-looking tent, by the way. I, that's how they got to camp. I don't camp cool enough, I guess. And they tell him, like, they're, they are the high table. This is the highest of high table. Right. And they're telling him, like, why don't you just quit? Why are you not just going to kill yourself? Like, this is crazy. Right. And Keanu Reeves, John Wick says, I'm living because of my wife. I have to remember her. I have to stay alive because I'm the only thing that remembers her. And I have to earn that memory, which puts everything into place. The first time he's going crazy because of the dog killed. But at this point, you're like, okay, look, my dog is safe. Why am I still bothering with this? It's because of his wife. He has to live on for her because she lives through his memories. It's something that we all cherish and now we see it take place in john wick there's something to him so i love that that was a good reason to be like keep fighting and so <clears throat> we they they offer him a way to revert his excommunicado and what will happen is he'll become like their personal assassin so when they need something taken care of it's not just putting a bounty out or having one of the assassins take care of it no he works for them he's chained to the table they said so it's kind of like an extreme version of being the, the life he already tried to escape. Because he, in the first movie, we saw him like leave this life. He wasn't an assassin anymore. And then they had to drag him back in because they were shooting his dog. This would be the polar opposite. He would be completely chained to the high table. John Wick agrees. And in loyalty, guys, this is ugh, brutal. He cuts off his ring finger, gives them the wedding ring, Guys, I'm predicting right now that's going to be the big plot for number four is he's going to want that wedding ring back. Anyways, and then they sear with a brand. More brand work. It's, ugh, it's brutal. And they brand his finger to shut off the the the, the wound, to, to cauterize the wound, onto the edge of his cut-off finger. Oh, it's, oh God, it's cringeworthy. It's crazy. Ugh. Anyways, so... <laughs> um. And then we see... Okay, so now John Wick's working for the high table, and he's heading... And they told him, we need you to go kill... Ian McShane. They said his name, whatever it was. Ian McShane. So now we got John Wick. He's in the hunt. It was a great flip the script moment where you're like, okay, now it's literally prey versus his predator, blah, 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 blah. Hunter becomes a hunted, yada, yada, yada. Something we've seen in the past. And as soon as he gets back into New York, 
you see Zero's men and they surround him and they're like, all right, let's go kill. Like they're working for him now. And so you're like, wow, this feels so weird, you know? Like, how does this, this feels weird? And then <laughs> John Wick's having none of it. They're both kind of approaching each other with knives. Like, neither of them are happy with the agreement. So they're trying to attack each other. And and right away, right away, John's like turning on his on um Zero's men and starts killing them. So he's fighting his they're both fighting on motorcycles. It was very well shot because you see, uh, you see, a, like, how do they do it? They, 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 they couldn't have rigged it. So there has to be a camera on the car, right? You've seen those before in the behind the scenes stuff. And you have John Wick on a motorcycle. And then you have a series of ninjas on motorcycles behind them, all with their swords. They're like katanas fighting on these motorcycles. And I'm like, man, that had to be so hard to shoot because unless you have that first bike or all the bikes on rigs, how are they, especially Keanu Reeves? I mean, you're seeing Keanu Reeves' face. This isn't a stunt coordinator or stunt actor. How are they doing this? I'm pretty sure they made sure to show the front wheel of the bike to where it wasn't connected. But I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure. Again, I'm watching the theaters. I can't like, hey oh, guys, wait, can you go back? I want to check something. No. So I think Keanu Reeves is just riding the motorcycle being a badass by himself. I'm just saying. Props to Keanu Reeves. That's pretty crazy. Okay. We get to the hotel and it's Zero and, and Keanu fighting. And right before Zero could kill him, he puts his hand on the hotel. And now remember, he works for the high table. So now he's in the safe zone. And we have uh, we have the uh, the uh, the assistant basically of the hotel come out and says like oh, you can't kill him he's unsafe now, so there's all that kind of like oh that's fine I guess. John wants to meet with the management so he wants to meet Ian McShane so he's in the waiting room and it's really cool moment where uh, John Wick and uh, Zero are sitting next to each other in the lobby, and it's you know they're in a safe zone now this is where they can be non assassins. Zero almost takes away all of his clout he had before. And he's like, by the way, I am the biggest fan. Like to John Wick. He was like, dude, he just tried to kill him. He's like, I'm the biggest fan. I follow all your work, kind of thing like that. Like, really happy I could meet you. This is excellent. <laughs> like, okay. Shows the shows behind the scenes a little bit of this assassin in the world, but it really takes away a lot of the 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 bluster, the the amazingness of Zero when you're like, oh, he's just a little fanboy <laughs> for John Wick. Okay, I get it. I am too. It's cool. So anyway, so John finally gets to meet Ian McShane in this room that I swear needs to be the next James Bond villain movie, you know? It's all glass. It has, like, samurai armor and stuff like that hung up inside. And they use this glass in a way that's almost like, basically, it's the House of Mirror effect, where, like, when you're walking, some pe- somebody, could, somebody could be invisible behind the wall. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's one of those things, we use it too much. It was used in us, and we need, we need to kind of, like, get away from the House of Mirrors for a little bit, guys. It's, it's cliche as hell. This was a new take on it, but it's still the same effect. So just don't do it. Anyway, so how's some of your stuff? Um, <clears throat> Ian explains, like, I'm not going to step down. They gave me the seven days. I'm not done. We learned that Lawrence Fishburne got cut to pieces. He got his torture and uh, and is dead now. Presumed dead. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> spoilers. So Ian McShane says, I'm standing up to the, to the high table. What do you want to do? And Keanu Reeves is like, you know, uh, he's kind of fish uh, going back and forth. And Ian McShane made a good point. He's like, do you want, you know, you escaped that life. You It's very rare. It doesn't ever happen. You did. Do you want to be a free man and die? Or do you want to be their slave tied to that table and live? What would your wife want? Kind of thing like that. And of course, that's that's the moment. So then we see Asia Kate uh, Dillon come in. And um, both the guys tell tell them that you know they're not going to be they're 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 not going to be joining the high table anymore and so asia calls in that's such a cool name asia kate dylan anyways asia calls in to to the high table the dispatch center and says that they're dis disconsecrated like oh god these names are so freaking cool disconsecrated which means no longer holy ground no longer safe and uh and so now it's war on like hey okay you're at war with the high table not going to go well, probably, because your guys got to be outnumbered, but you're at war with the high table. And it's it's very professional. It's like, okay, well, who war it is. So Asia goes downstairs, and uh, and John talks to Ian, and John now has full access to the armory. And this is full video game, guys. It's like at the end of the video game where you're like, okay, just survive. If you've played anything Rockstar's ever made, any Grand Theft Auto, any, uh, what's the other one that's amazing, Red Dead Redemption, it's always that last stand where it's like, okay, just survive the overwhelming numbers. That's what we're getting right now. So he's got full access to the armory. It's really cool. We learn what parabella means. And uh, parabella means prepare for, and I think it's in Latin. 
And Ian McShane says it as he's being sealed up in the armory. So he's just going to hang out in the armory. I guess it's a good spot. I can't blame him. <laughs> he's drinking scotch. Looks like our whiskey. Whiskey, probably whiskey. Uh, this is uh, now. So then we're getting John. He's got his full guns and he's running around. And the guys that are invading are all wearing pretty armored sets. Like they're all pretty decked out. And John's sitting there popping off. And he, this is old John Wick. This is the John Wick we love, where he's like, double tap, double tap, double tap. And I'm doing a lot of hand gestures, but he's just double tapping left and right. And what's cool is because you're wearing armor, you're watching him like quadra tap, you know? So he like shoot and shoot. And then he like, he like, there's one moment where he actually lifts the visor on a guy's helmet, shoots in the face. There's a guy, he shoots one guy until he tits over, and then he hits in the back of the neck. Like it's so visceral. It's so brutal. But it's like, yeah, that makes sense. I can see that, you know? There's one moment. Best shot of the entire movie, guys. Amazing. Probably super unrealistic. Him and this one guy fall into a pool. And the guy goes and he starts... He's got Sean Wick in the crosshairs. He starts shooting at John Wick. It's all happening pretty quick. But we see the bullets and that sound like... Doo -doo, like, you know, echoey in the water. They got a lot of good reverb on that. Shoots it and we see the bullet go slow and drop. Like, it, But it's having, happening fast enough to where you're like... Wow, I can't believe I got to see that. How do I explain that? Like the moment's happening fast, but the bullets aren't, you know? So we're seeing all these bullets fall right before they hit to John Wick. They're just all going slow because it's underwater. Again, I don't know how realistic that is. John Wick then goes up, swimming up to the guy, and just, you know, pops him in the face. And like, I mean, it's crazy. He like shoots him in the face, lifts the helmet, shoots twice in the helmet, and then one more time in the back of the helmet. Like, it's, oh God, it's terrible, but it's crazy. So they're, they're fighting along and stuff like that. John Wick eventually makes himself back to the armor. He gets armor-piercing bullets this time, and he's joined by the concierge, uh, played by Lance Reddick, who is just awesome. And they come back out with armor-piercing stuff now, and they're just tearing things up. We're seeing John Wick now double-tap with a machine gun, like pop-pop with a big machine gun. He's got he's got the shotguns. They're kicking butt. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we finally get to the moment where Zero's out there, Zero and his men, and... It's it's funny because like as they're fighting, you kind of see moments where and Riddick's kind of on his own thing, but Riddick. Um, but John's fighting these guys. And he's, they're eventually fighting in like the villain room. Like you know how action movies go. There's all kinds of little action sets are going on. It's all kinds of cool stuff. A lot of cool double tap, quadra tap stuff. Eventually, they get to that James Bond villain room and they're fighting John Wick and it's fight and, and and Zero's men. And um, interesting things happening. So John Wick, he's tired. It's been a long fight for him. He gets knocked down and they're about to kill him. And then they're like, out of respect, like, one more time, buddy. I was like, boy, that's, uh, that's kind of taking me out of a little bit. I get that the respect moment. We saw it out of zero earlier, but it's kind of taking me out of it. And then, you know, they keep doing it and they kind of keep giving it to him. And eventually he does kill them. And it's, and Zero's kind of watching his men fall. It's one of those things in, in a lot of the older action movies, again, where they kind of take their time. Like, yeah, I get the honor of it all, guys, but just kill him already. Like, Kill John Wick already. You guys had the moments multiple times. You get the job done. Just do it, you know. So it kind of takes you out of it a little bit if you if you really kind of you know, care about it. So uh, before we keep going, I just want to throw it out again. If you guys want to stop here, you have up to the final moments of this movie. It's a good time to stop because we're going full spoilers, okay? And that was your warning. Here we go. Zero and John Wick start to fight now. It's, it's just the last two of them. It's a pretty badass fight, but it's a very Hall of Mirrors fight again. And what they do have a cool effect, though, is you're on the other side of this bulletproof glass. It's this Hall of Mirrors thing. And as, like, they swing, because they only have one katana that both of them are fighting with or sharing this, like, katana. And as one of them will swing with it, it marks on the on the glass. So that's kind of a cool effect happening. And they're going back and forth, back and forth. And while this is happening, I do like the fact that, like, Asia's chilling out in the lobby and Ian's chilling out in the armory and, like, Asia will call Ian and say, like, oh, we just want to talk. He'll hang up. <laughs> they're, all, they're almost in trade negotiations while this is going on. And it, it, their personality differences is, is, is pretty cool to see, you know. So finally we get the kill. We, we get to where John Wick, he gets the katana into Zero's chest, and he's, like, hammering it in with his fist. And he's done that in the past with, like, knives to the head and stuff like that. Hammering it in, and they're both sitting next to each other, and they're both, like, Opposite sides of the coins, just totally drained. And <laughs> Zero's got the katana in his belly. And he's like, oh, yeah, you think that was a pretty good fight, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a pretty good fight. And John goes to get up because he's still got to kill more people. He's got to find Asia and try to get rid of this problem. And <laughs> Zero's like, just give me a sec. I'm going to get a katana in the belly, guys. 
give me a sec. I'll get up and I'll I'll, I'll help out and I'll, I'll get you. I'll catch up with you, John. And John's like, no, you won't. You're you're done now. So right after he walks away, eight, uh, 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 Zero falls over. Props to Zero. You had a real big up and down in this movie, but props to you. And we have John moving out. Now, uh, so Zero's gone. And Asia and Ian spoke on the phone finally and says, hey, let's do parlay. Let's talk this out. So they go to the roof. That's meeting time. And they're talking. And John was about to join them. They get up there and they make an, they make an agreement. So basically what, what John or what uh, uh, Ian McShane is telling Asia is, look, we could continue this war. We're down for it. There is a good chance he'll take the Continental, but we have so, so many connections within New York. We'll take it right back. So this prolonged war, you kind of feel like Ian McShane might have something going on here. Like he might actually have like more connections than just Lawrence Fishburne and his hobo army or whatever they're called. Um, so, you know, I, I want to see more. Of, I love the world building in these movies, so I want to see more of it. Anyways, they go through that. They agree on it. Or, you know, and so, and so they make an agreement. I'm sorry, I, I jumped ahead. They make an agreement, and, and what's going to happen is Ian McShane will rejoin the high table and stay manager of the Continental. And Asia's percept perception of this is, oh, okay, you went to war with this to prove how strong you are. Uh, that's a little thin. I'll give you that. It's a little thin. He just killed a bunch of your guys, so whatever. Ian McShane says, yeah, 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 that's what it was. Then we see uh, John Wick's like, well, wait, what's going to happen? And Asia's like, you got to get, what are you going to do with John Wick? And he says, oh, I got to kill him. So, sorry, didn't... And so he brings out the gun and just shoots John Wick a bunch of times. And so John Wick falls off the building. I mean, really cheesy, guys, because we all know, you know, John Wick's going to be fine. But he does fall. He's got bullets. He does, like, hit railing on the way down. I mean, it is a brutal fall. John Wick should be dead. And it's, again, you're kind of like, I don't believe all this is going to happen. I think their relationship's too strong for that. But anyways, Asia's like, all right, deal. Asia's leaving. And while we're seeing Asia walk away, uh, Lance, uh, Lance Reddick, the concierge, tells, John, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Ian McShane, you know, oh, good planner, good good player. So, so we're, we're told this is all, you know, for baloney. Asia gets down to the car. About to head out, sees John Wick's no longer in the alley, so she's so they're a little you know worried about that. Goes in, talks to Ian, says, "Hey, where's John Wick?" Oh, I don't know. Hopefully, and then Asia's like, "Look, we don't want him on the loose for either of us, so that's your that's your John Wick for you know." And then finally, Asia leaves, and everything's good over there. We see towards the end, the last moments of the movie, John Wick was picked up by the hobo army and brought before the king. Morpheus is still alive. Heck yeah, guys. So Morpheus, although recuperating, is still alive and says, look, I'm the king. I don't want to be ruled by them anymore. Are you on my, are you angry? I'm angry. And then John Wick says, I'm angry. And so John Wick 4, it's going to be Neo and Morpheus versus High Table. I'm stoked because it's, it's, I like more Lawrence Fishburne. He's awesome. More Keanu Reeves. He has that, what's that called? I can't remember what it's called. It's the, the like the hero's mask where you can personate being him, stuff like that. So I'm happy to see this. This is going to be fantastic. Overall, guys, solid movie. Really good action movie. There were moments where I was like, oh, snap, or oh, shit, I can't believe that happened. Oh, man, that's what action movies are for. They're not for like co you know, complex character development or stories that make you think. No, 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 not about that. They're, they're about the action pieces. They're about like, how did they get those motorcycles to do that? Or, whoa, that dog just... Jumped on that guy. There were a lot of... I just think about that. There was a part where Doug jumped on a guy and they both fell back on a pile of mattresses. Like, okay, that was pretty bad. But anyways, a lot of really good action pieces. There were some, like, plot things that would kind of change. That's why I'm going a little bit lower on this. Um, Keanu Reeves was awesome. Lawrence Fishburne, awesome. Ian McShane, awesome. Halle Berry, awesome, guys. I'm not necessarily a big Halle Berry fan. She was awesome in this movie. Just acting-wise, really good. Um, Asia Kate Dillon fantastic villain uh, uh you've seen asia in uh um orange is the new black one of the uh, skinheads in that we had lance riddick who's give him more roles dude's crazy good really good cast I, I, i'm looking forward to there's a bunch of cameos i know like penguin from gotham was one of the operators in uh in the dispatch room stuff like that little cameos and stuff like that uh so i really want to see more out of this i like this director a lot this is this director is chad uh, Staliski, Staliski, boy, these names are great. Uh, he's he's the director of the first John Wick. He's a stunt coordinator from um, 
oh, what's it called? Matrix, the first Matrix. And he did the second unit for uh, Civil War. So if you guys don't understand what that means, you have a first unit doing like principal photography who was just like the actual fights and stuff like that. You have the second team when you have to have like, oh, while these guys are fighting, Scarlet Witch and Vision are over here doing a romantic thing. He's the second team. They have to like film on location in Italy or something like that while the rest of the team are in Atlanta or something like that, you know. So he has some pretty good stuff under his belt. I'm really looking forward to him, to more from this director. The raining in the, or the shooting in the rain for the first act was smart. Uh, when they're in the desert, those beautiful landscape shots of the desert, really well done. The underwater bullet thing was like, oh, so good. Pacing was solid. All around pretty good. The only slow parts was during the middle fight against Bronze Army. So, uh, you know, solid. Sound design was pretty safe. That's nothing that went out of its way. It's classic action movie stuff. Slow at these parts, fast at those parts. It, you know, I guess if I didn't know the sound, notice the soundtrack too much, that's a good thing because it's not supposed to be distracting. It's supposed to just make you feel emotion. So, good job there. Um, one excellent moment. Props to them. Is Ian McShane put, when things are about to go down in the Continental, Ian McShane puts a record on. It's classic music. And that's called diegetic sound. We see the music. It's We know it's coming from that record. We see where the source of that music is. Then as things are going on and the invasion's kicking in, it becomes the background soundtrack, non-diegetic sound. So we go from diegetic to non-diegetic. I love when movies do those tricks. That, 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 that simple transition is fantastic. Um, it's uh, something small, but it kind of like, it just, it, unwittingly puts into the viewer like oh this is badass like it just does that it's classic music and it's done really really well um as for special effects and cgi not a lot of cgi except for you know we had keanu's ring, ring finger missing i didn't notice that to be a problem so props there i guess normally just the special effects all the gun firing the again the underwater thing really nice moves acting was done well i mean it was it was a solid solid movie i'm giving it a b i'm gonna go with 83 the reason I'm going 83 instead of like a high 80s or a low 90s is I think the plot was a little bit messy. I think we could have cleaned it up a little bit. I actually wanted to see more Halle Berry. Maybe she could have come back to New York. Uh, I hope she's in the next one. Something I didn't think I would say before because I, I always think like if you're looking for a Halle Berry type, Jada Pinkett Smith. Like nobody gives her enough roles. Jada Pinkett Smith is freaking awesome. Watch Gotham. I'm telling you, she's awesome. So... I think we could have cleaned things up a little bit. The Morpheus thing was a little bit kind of, I wanted to see more about why he's connected to the high table. They didn't really explain much of it. Uh, yeah, so, you know, there are some things, but I mean, it's a good movie, guys. Go out and see it. 83 out of 100. If you're a John Wick fan, you should be seeing this movie. And if you're not, if you're just an action movie fan, see it as well. Theaters, if you want a good date night. If not, it will definitely be good on streaming. And I hope you guys enjoy the movie. And I hope you enjoyed this review. Let us know if you guys like this style of review. We've done these three now. Or if you want the old ones where we were doing like the um, tallying up points for uh, 20 points for directing, uh, 15 points for this, you know, special effects. That system, I think, was fun and it has its merits, but this one is kind of more based off of our Game of Thrones reviews, which we, again, I've mentioned before. We had a lot of good uh, props on that, so we're kind of going back and forth on it. We're trying to see what, what you guys would want. So let us know. We love feedback. Helps us out so much. Those reviews on iTunes, guys, you guys don't understand how big those are for us. It helps us in getting up on the, on the charts, but more importantly, like, the group, the five of us that, that really run this podcast, we really appreciate seeing those. It's just the fan engagement, that's, that's, that's what's driving us so much, guys. When we see you guys reply to us on Twitter, when we have conversations, that's, that's what this is all about. We are so happy watching you guys listen to this we we see the charts you know of who was listening where not who necessarily but where they're from and listening and we have so many like we're from california so, so the fact that we have some loyal fans from virginia that have been listening since the very first episode we posted we have fans that are in europe we have we have some fans out in india brazil's big with us uh sweden so, hello our swedish people we're, we're big in that country it's so neat to see and and anytime you guys get back to us on Twitter and stuff like that, it's just, it's been a, a true joy. I'm going off on a tangent, and this has already been about a 40-minute episode, so I'll cut it here. But anyways, thank you guys very much for sticking with us, and let us know what you guys think about these reviews and how it worked out. We'll be back next week with a full episode with all the juicy news, and there's so much good stuff to talk about. Star Wars Zelda Republic movie, hello. And so we're excited to see that. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later, and bye. Thank you for joining us on the Geek Freaks Podcast. 
You can find us on Twitter at Geek Freaks Pod. We're also on Facebook, Instagram. You can email us. We have our Patreon and a store. All those links are in the description. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.